Thanks for joining me here again at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, and that's the gospel of the grace of God, and that gospel is only found in the Apostle Paul's writings. The Apostle Paul's writings today, in the dispensation of the grace of God, according to the revelation of the mystery that was only given to the Apostle Paul on the authority of Galatians 1.11, he received a special revelation by the Lord Jesus Christ on Damascus Road in Acts chapter 9. Before Acts chapter 9, the gospel of the grace of God was not given to anyone. It was not known by anyone. It was kept secret. The Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, was also not known by anyone before the apostle, before Saul of Tarsus was saved. Okay, so that means in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, that is not Paul's my gospel. That is not the gospel of the grace of God. That is not the death, burial, and resurrection. That is believe, repent, and be baptized for remission of sin. Okay, that is not Paul's my gospel. Peter, James, and John, and the Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry never ever preached the gospel of the grace of God. And the Apostle Paul never ever preaches repent and be baptized for remission of sin. Okay, two separate ministries, two separate plans of salvation, one for Israel, one for the church, the body of Christ, one of prophecy, one of mystery, one of times past and ages to come, and one of the but now, today, the dispensation of the grace of God. You need to make sure and understand you're trusting in the right gospel. Okay, if you're trusting in the gospel of the kingdom today, in this dispensation of the grace of God, we are not in the dispensation of law, we are in the dispensation of the grace of God. If you're trusting in repenting and being baptized for remission of sin, that is, ex that is exactly what you'll get, but you're going to find that out when you're in hell, okay? Because we're not going to inherit a kingdom, we are not going to endure to the end, and our sins are not remitted today in the dispensation of the grace of God. Today we have a present possession. Today we are complete in Christ. Today we have complete forgiveness according to what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us on Calvary's cross. And by the way, if you're looking for the word Calvary, it's only found in your King James Authorized Version. None of the new translations have the word Calvary. Okay, So don't be looking if you have a new translation, you're not going to find it. So do we have to confess our sin for forgiveness of sin, like it says in 1 John 1, 9, in ages to come under the law covenant for Israel? No, we have a present possession. Um, Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So according to God's grace, his death, burial, and resurrection, in the dispensation of the grace of God, according to the revelation of the mystery, we have forgiveness today. We don't have to confess for forgiveness. We have, we have forgiveness today based on what Christ did for us. Now, Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Okay? His blood, the Lord Jesus Christ's blood, God's blood, is what forgives us our sin. Okay? Don't listen to John MacArthur. He says the blood has nothing to do with forgiving sin. Okay, you can read that in the New King James Study Bible by James MacArthur. Okay, in God's perfectly preserved Word, it makes it very clear in Ephesians 1 7 and the Colossians 1 14 that it is God's blood, the Lord Jesus Christ's blood, that forgives us our sin. Okay, now if you're going through the kingdom and you're enduring to the end then yes, you need to confess for forgiveness of sin, okay? But we're not in that time. We're in the but now. We're not in ages to come. We're not Israel. We're not Jews. We're not Hebrews. And we're not under any covenant. Romans 6.14 says we're not under the law. We are under grace. And that is Bible truth, okay? That verse means exactly what it says. When you understand your Bible dispensationally and you rightly divide it and you're on a Pauline foundation, and you are dispensational, and you're a King James Bible believer, then you can believe the verses 
for actually for what they actually say. Isn't that amazing? Because I know my pastor used to say at Harvest that that verse really doesn't mean what it says. And you know what I say today? If I don't believe my Bible as it stands, and if they're telling me at these denominational, non-denominational churches that God's Word doesn't mean what it says, I need to find another church to go to. And guess what? You know what? I better find a church that God would want me to go to, not what I would want to go to. Okay? And those churches are very hard to find. If you're looking for an assembly that teaches Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, they're very, very hard to find. Because you'll notice today, in the dispensation of the grace of God, everyone has rejected Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, and they're still building kingdoms in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when clearly in John 18, Jesus says that his kingdom is not of this world. So what they're building, I don't know. Why don't you go discuss that with your pastor? And by the way, New Jerusalem, the kingdom to come, is still in heaven, and it's already built. So, we have forgiveness of sin by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to confess our sin. And he's not counting one trespass against us based on the death, burial, and resurrection, based on Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, based on Paul's, my gospel. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21 says he's not counting one trespass against anyone. He has reconciled the entire world to himself. And Romans 5, 10 says that since we are reconciled to God through his son, we are saved by his life. Okay, Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself. Now it's up to us as ministers of reconciliation to preach Paul's my gospel that you'll only find in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 and hope that people will trust in the death, burial, and resurrection for payment for their sin and by faith, their faith will be counted as righteousness. They'll be sealed until the day of redemption. They'll be seated in heavenly places. They'll have all spiritual blessings. They'll have peace with God. And they'll be complete in Christ. They will be saved. It's a free gift. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It's not of yourselves. There's no boasting. It's not by works of the law. Galatians 2, 16. And it's not by works of righteousness. Titus 3, 5. So put it all down and trust in what Christ did for you and live by faith. Faith is believing in what you don't see. Most of these denominations and non-denominational churches are believing in what they see. You see water baptism, you see tithing, you see serving, you see serving in the children's ministry. All that is not a faith. All that is of works, righteous works law works. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to get you into hell if you're not trusting in solely and by grace through faith and grace all by itself with the Lord Jesus Christ without adding anything to it, without adding your water baptism, without adding your tithing, without adding your baptismal certificate that you got from your friendly pastor. Okay, maybe you got it hanging above your wall. Okay, because if you mix works with what Christ did for you on the cross, then grace is no more grace. Romans 11:6. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. And if you think Jesus did his part, and now you must do your part to get saved or stay saved, you know, because you might think you're going to lose your salvation if you don't keep those works up, then write down what your part is and at the top of the page write down why I'm going to hell okay because 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 makes it very clear that the Lord Jesus Christ did it all for us and you don't owe him nothing Acts chapter 17 confirms that and he doesn't want anything from you 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. 
by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And notice, Paul preached the gospel, and he preached it in verse 1. He preached it in verse 2. We're not to share the gospel. We are to preach the gospel, and then we are to teach sound doctrine. Okay, We are to preach the gospel, not share the gospel. The only time you see the word share in your Bible is attached to a plow. Okay, So all these pastors that are sharing the gospel are wrong. Okay, We are to preach it. Okay, We are not to let the congregation decide where, where we are to go and what we are to preach. We are to preach sound doctrine. And if people don't like it, hey, it's a free country. Listen to someone else. That's why God made exit signs, right? You got two feet, you walk out. Okay? It's as simple as that. So today we're going to talk about part four in Christian confusion about my friend who, like I said in, verse, in parts one, two, and three, my friend said that he was born again and then he said he was crucified with Christ. Okay? So you're either born again or you're crucified. Okay? One is, one is you're born and one is you're dead. So, which is it? Okay? He's obviously confused. He said he gave Jesus his life, when clearly Jesus gave us his life. Okay? And um, he said God called him. And that scares me <clears throat> today in the dispensation of the grace of God. Because God calls us through the preaching of the gospel. Okay? When you trust in the death, burial, and resurrection, then you're saved. That's the calling today, okay? Because if God is calling us the way he called Israel in time past, then why do we need to preach the gospel? I'll just wait till God calls them. You know, does he call you on the phone or does he email you today? How does, how does that work? Okay, well, he thinks that God called them. And by the way, the... Um, Dean at the Southern Baptist Convention wrote a book called The Calling. And my friend has to go through that in his evangelical studies on evangelism. I mean, how, how much of an agenda can that be? It's not God's agenda. If you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, then you're going to think that because 95% of your Bible is for Israel, you're going to think that all those promises and all those things that God said to Israel are for you. And that's what most of churchianity thinks today. All the promises that God gave Israel, they're robbing from Israel and saying that they're for them today. That's horribly wrong. And then he says the gospel is without works. Okay, He gives me Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, but he never tells me what the gospel is. Okay, There's several Gospels in your Bible. Okay, there's not just two or three or four, there's several. You know, and they all have different functions. You know, we're always saved. God saves by grace through faith in every dispensation. But the way he delivers the good news to get people saved is different in the dispensations. Okay, one, you have to, you have to do works under a covenant. One, you don't. I mean, that's truly different. You know, if we were still under a covenant today, if Israel was still here and we were under a covenant, we would not have salvation. Okay? Romans 11, 11 says, because Israel has fallen, salvation has come to the Gentiles. If Israel is here today, like everyone says, like all these prophetic ministers say, then no one is saved. No one is saved outside of Israel. Because they, they are claiming that they're not fallen when the Bible says they are. And it's through their fall that we get salvation, us Gentiles, or everyone else outside of Israel. Okay? That's a huge Bible truth, doctrinal truth, dispensational truth that no one gets. 
when you tell them Romans 9, 10, and 11 is about Israel and their fall and the grafted in is Israel, they have a conniption fit. Because they don't read and they don't study. When you tell them Galatians chapter 2, 7, 8, and 9 is a change in the commission, and like I had said in part 3, the word great commission is nowhere to be found in your Bible. Somebody made that up. Some scholar. I didn't study it out. I don't need to study it out. It's not in my Bible, so I know it's not biblical. It's as simple as that. You can get all caught up in what everybody says, but if it's not in your Bible, it's not biblical. Okay? The Great Commission is not biblical. There are several commissions in your Bible, and they chose one, and they called it great. It's just mind-boggling, okay? Why they chose the one to be great over the other? I think Galatians 2, 7, 8, and 9 are, is, should be the Great Commission, if we're going to call it great. Because that's the one where we have a gospel that saves people without works. Isn't that greater than doing works? That gospel, the grace of God, is amazing today. It's just trusting in what Christ did for you. All you have, if you want to do something, then trust what he did. Some people would call that easy believism. If it's so easy, why aren't you believing it? <sighs> okay, but he says the gospel is without works. He never tells me what the gospel is. And he gives me Ephesians 2, 8, 9, where it clearly says it's a gift of God. But then he says you have to confess with your, with your mouth. Romans 10, 9, and 10. That's Israel's doctrine. I just told you that. Romans 9, 10, and 11. Read it. Read it over and over and over again. And tell me how many times the Apostle Paul mentions Israel. It's dozens of times. It's like every other verse. Then he says, his, then I asked him if God perfectly preserved his word. He says it's preserved, but it's not accurate. It's only 98%. So, you know, if God's going to judge us according to these new translations, you're going to show up at the judgment seat of Christ, he's going to open up the Word, and he's not going to be able to even find his own name in it. <laughs> it's just mind-boggling. He's going to see that his name was changed to he, and when you cross-reference he, it, it could cross-reference the devil. And it's just, it's just a sad, sick, twisted truth. People believe that, that that's, that God preserved his word, but it's not accurate. God makes mistakes. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And you know who the word is, right? 1 John 5, 7 confirms that the three are one. And that, that verse is only found in your King James authorized version. In new translations, there's that one verse that confirms that God's three and one. They removed it. Okay, and then when they removed it, they made up the word Trinity. Okay, and that's just floating around. That's not even in your Bible. Okay, why not just leave the verse in it that says God's three in one God the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit? Who's the Word? John chapter 1 says the Word became flesh. 1 John confirms that the Word became flesh. The Word. The Bible that you're holding in your hand is the Lord Jesus Christ. So if the Lord Jesus Christ is the Word, he's only 98% accurate? <sighs> Unbelievable. And then he says he's going to fulfill the Great Commission. Again, open part three of my message on, on um, Christian confusion. If you could find Great Commission in your Bible, email me at but now ministry at gmail.com and then the last thing we're going to touch on is is that he says his life has completely changed and you know what he's as fired up as I was when I was saved okay if he is saved okay and he may be he may trust in the death burial and resurrection but he doesn't have a clarity of it okay he doesn't have he doesn't know where he's at in the Bible and what he's going to do is, is, let's say he's saved. He trusts in the death, burial, and resurrection. He will always be a baby, milk toast Christian because he's going to be in the red letters the rest of his life. 
and he's going to do everything wrong for the Lord. Because the Lord is not in the red letters today. The red letters is before the cross. A lot of things happen after the cross. He went up to heaven and sent down the counselor. He's not walking around today, but people claim to be following him. I don't understand how that works when in the dispensation of the grace of God, the Apostle Paul says he's in us and we're the church. We represent Christ. We're the ambassador for Christ. Each saved person represents the church, the body of Christ. We're the pillar and ground of truth, is what Paul says. And Paul is telling that us telling that to us because he's doing his job out of obedience to the Lord because the Lord told him to do that to write these things down okay I don't follow the Apostle Paul I follow the Lord Jesus Christ and what he gave to the Apostle Paul to give to us okay So you gotta, you got to understand your Bible or you're going to think God called you. You're going to think you're born again. You're going to think you have to fulfill the Great Commission when your neighbor's in dire need of the gospel. You're going to go to Honduras and hand out gift bags and never preach the gospel. And your neighbor dies the next day and goes to hell. Go figure. How much money are our churches raising to go to these foreign countries because they're trying to fulfill the Great Commission that's nowhere in the Bible? That's in Jesus' earthly ministry that he clearly spoke about to the disciples? I mean, you weren't even there. He wasn't even talking to you. You know, that's like your mother telling your sister to do things, and then you do them. Why would you do that? Your mother wasn't talking to you. She was talking to your sister. That's like you finding a letter on the ground that talks all about your neighbor, and you picking up the letter and reading it, and then you say, oh, yeah, that's all about me. I mean, it's clearly just stupidity. Why would you pick up Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Clearly, it's all about Israel, under a covenant, under a law. Jesus Christ is a minister to the circumcision to confirm the promises of the fathers, and you say he's talking to you. It says on the top of his cross that he's king of the Jews. What does Paul say about the Jews today? There is no Jew or Gentile today. But back there, there was. Why would Paul say there's no Jew or Gentile in his writings, in the dispensation of the grace of God? Because Romans 9, 10, and 11 says Israel's fallen. And now we have a new creature in place that replaces all of that. But nobody believes that. Nobody believes that. Look at all the Jews walking around. It's amazing to me. So, the last thing we're touching on is he says his life has completely changed. And I say, is it like someone who decides to quit drugs? You know? Is it a behavioral change? Is it behavioral modification? Because if it is, then it's no different than NA, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous or the 12-step program. Because that's what they do in those programs, right? They put a bunch of people around you so you stay on the straight and narrow. Okay, you used to drink, you know, a lot of booze. Now you're drinking coffee. Okay, you used to smoke a lot of dope. Now you're smoking cigarettes, right? And you're you're around all these people that tell you all their stories of how they overcame all their bad habits, right? Isn't that that's no different than small group today, right? You sit in small group. Nobody comes prepared. Everyone has a different translation and not a Bible. And so because of that, you don't even discuss anything in the Bible. Okay, we'll punt that. Let's just get right to the chase. Let's, let's get to accountability. And then as you're sitting in accountability, what are you talking about? Oh, I screwed up here and 
I spoke to my wife in anger, and you know, I didn't read the Bible this week. All you're doing is confessing your sin. I thought you were a new creature. I thought we were to reckon ourselves dead. I thought we were to walk in newness in life. I thought we were to walk by faith and not by sight. I thought we'd been given all spiritual blessings. I thought we were to walk according to the fruit of the Spirit and not according to the flesh. So now it's all about behavior modification, right? As if God wants anything from you. He wants you to walk in newness of life. Don't get me wrong. Once you become a new creature, you are to reckon that old man dead. You're to walk in newness of life. You are to deny all ungodliness and worldly desires. Okay? That's not behavior modification. That's walking by faith and not by sight. Okay? So, is your position now, your life change, is it eternal or is it by sight? Because if it's by sight, then you're no different than a Narcotics Anonymous, AA, you know, small groups, all these programs that they have in place. And you're not walking in newness of life, you're not a new creature. Okay? You're not under law, you're under grace. That tutor was that tutor, that law was to lead you to Christ. Now that you're in Christ, you don't need the law to tutor you anymore. You know, those that are not under the law, that law is a tutor to lead us to Christ. Okay? And if you're not under that law, and if that law was only a tutor, and now that you're in Christ, why do you keep going back under the weak and beggarly law? It's weak and beggarly, Paul says. Because you have something better, you have a present possession, you're in Christ. Okay? And how does Christ change us today? Well, it's through study. 2 Timothy 2.15, right? We are to study to show ourselves approved. And what happens when we study? But we have to have a Bible to study, okay? A new translation isn't going to do the job. It's not God's Word. So when you have your Bible, the King James Authorized Version, and you're studying it, God says that He'll work effectually in you if you believe it. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 Okay, he's not going to work effectually in you in a Bible that's only 98% accurate, a translation. That's not going to work. That's not going to get the job done. It's got to be God's perfectly preserved Word, without error. It's got to be one God made, not these translators that follow a minority, corrupt, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus, Roman Catholic text. Okay. Ephesians 1.3 says what? Again, I don't want to bog down too much into this. But we are to walk in newness of life, okay? We are not to gather in small groups and talk about our sin, okay? We are to encourage one another to walk according to the Spirit, okay? We are to teach faithful men to teach faithful men. And we are to stay in sound doctrine, okay? It's the sound doctrine that does the work inside us. It's Paul's my gospel that does the work inside us. It's Paul's unsearchable riches of Christ in his writings. It's the manifold wisdom of God. His writings complete the Word of God. Okay, it's His writings that does the work inside us. His writings are all by faith, not by sight. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ. Not physical blessings in earthly places, outside of Christ, but all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ. Okay? Ephesians 2, 5, and 6. And these are the things you need to be talking about if you're in an assembly with people. Okay? I'm not talking a small group setting. None of that's biblical, okay? But I'm talking in an assembly of believers who are like-minded, who are Pauline in their doctrine and foundation. You are to encourage one another to walk in newness of life. To walk according to the Spirit, not the flesh, okay? All the kingdom stuff's all flesh, you guys. It's all flesh. It's all under the law. It's flesh. 
It's doing the works for God and believing in Him. That's not where we're at today. We're in, the, we're in a new dispensation. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Ephesians 2, 5, and 6. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're sitting in heavenly places right now in Christ. Do you believe that by faith? Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Okay, notice it doesn't say he's the king of all principality and power. It says, which is the head of all principality and power. Because in the dispensation of the grace of God, he's our head and we're part of his body. Okay, in the dispensation of law or in the dispensation um, or in ages to come, okay, under the law, he's the king of Israel. Okay, two times, two different times, two different dispensations, and God playing different roles throughout the Bible. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Okay? The last Adam, and we're in the last Adam. 1 Corinthians 15, 40. There are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial. The glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. We get celestial bodies, because we're going to be in heavenly places, and Israel gets the terrestrial bodies. Why? Because they're going to be on earth. Two different programs here, guys. 2 Corinthians 5.7 For we walk by faith, not by sight. And let's go to verse 6 of that chapter. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Okay? While we're home here, we're absent from the Lord, right? But we walk by faith, not by sight. When we walk by faith and not by sight... Then we're seated in heavenly places. Right? We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Right? We have to be absent from this body. Forget about it. Think about things above, not on things of the earth, right? When we're thinking about this body, what does it say in verse six in verse five? I'm sorry, verse 6. When we're thinking about the body, then we're absent from the Lord. But when we're not thinking about the body, when we're absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. Right? We are to reckon ourselves dead. Our body is dead. Or are you loving your body every day? Right? I know I do. And I got to keep reckoning it dead. Romans 8, 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. What is everybody hoping in these denominational, non-denominational churches? How many bapti water baptisms they have, right? Hey, if they don't have, you know, 200 water baptisms the following week, because they only had 100 the week before. Hey, we're not doing our job. That's where their hope is, right? But that's stuff you can see, right? Hey, we didn't take in enough money last week. That's what they see, right? Well, what does this verse say? For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. That's not hope. What they do over there and all those things that they see. For what a man seeth, what that 
Why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? We have to hope in what we don't see. And that's how we have to live every day. 2 Corinthians 4.18 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at the things which are seen. Yeah, look at all these denominational, non-denominational churches. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. We're, right? We are to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Did we ever see that? We are to preach that. We are to look at things that aren't seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Okay? That's where we're seated, right? Did anybody get eternity in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? No. Why? Because they're going to inherit the kingdom. Where's the kingdom at? It's going to be here on earth. Is it here yet now? No. Thy kingdom come. It's not here yet. Okay, It's still up in heaven, and God's going to bring it down. And it's already built. Did I mention that before? Okay. Can you see that, though? Yeah, you can see that, right? We are to hope in what we don't see. And that's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We are to hope in all the truth that comes with Jesus Christ and Him being crucified. That we're co complete. That we're sealed. We're not going to go through the wrath of God. He saved us from wrath. We don't owe anything to Him. He paid our debt. We're not under the law, we're under grace. Do you believe these things by faith? Or do you believe them by sight? Are you walking according to sight or by faith? Are you hoping in what you see or what you don't see? All of Israel's program is what you see. Prophecy is all about what you, what you see. Prophecy is all about what you're going to what you're going to get. They haven't gotten it yet. They have not inherited the kingdom yet. They have to sell all their possessions. You can clearly see that. They have to keep all the commandments. You can clearly see that. In our dispensation, we have to hope in what we don't see. Because we don't have all that going on today. Israel's fallen, Romans 9, 10, and 11. And we were always strangers to the covenants and promises, Ephesians 2, 12. Galatians 2, 20 is what you need to be talking about if you're in a small group. Not your sin. We are to reckon ourselves dead. Why? Because we're crucified with Christ. We're crucified. Okay? Are you, walk, are you living the crucified life? Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. So why are you following him? Doesn't he liveth in you? Again, are you believing in what you don't see? And the life which I now live in the flesh... I live by the faith. What's faith? Hoping in what you don't see. That's the biblical definition. Don't go online and look at all the different definitions of faith because they're all wrong. Google it. Google faith and look at everyone's definition. None of it is Bible definition. Faith is hoping in what you don't see. What didn't you see? You didn't see Christ die for your sin. But you hope in it, you have faith in it, and your faith is counted 
as righteousness, Romans 4, 5. By the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And Colossians 3, 3. And we're going to wrap this up. So my hope is, is that my friend's life did completely change, but it's not because he's modifying his behavior. It's because he's hoping in what he doesn't see. It's because he's studying to show himself approved, and he's having faith that the Word of God will work effectually in him because he believes it. Okay, But from my understanding of what he had told me through his text message, he is very confused. Okay. He does not believe he's a new creature. He thinks he's born again. He doesn't believe the Gospels without works. He thinks he has to confess with his mouth. He thinks God is calling him, so then so much for preaching the Gospel, the grace of God. He thinks he has to fulfill the Great Commission, so much for Galatians 2, 7, 8, and 9. He thinks... that the Bible is preserved, but it's only 98% accurate, so much for him in the judgment seat of Christ, when God judges him according to the word that is perfect. Okay? And now, my hope is, is that he is living by faith and not by sight. Colossians 3.3. 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. We're dead, you guys. We're crucified. Our life is hid. That old man is gone. Walk in newness of life. Walk according to the Spirit. Walk by faith and not by sight. Thanks again for joining me. This will conclude Christian confusion. Hopefully, I didn't make you more confused. Hopefully you're seeing the difference between the dispensation and the grace of God, Paul's writings, and the rest of your Bible, which is a prophecy, okay? 5%, well, a little less than 5% of your Bible is mystery. It's doctrine for the church, the body of Christ. It's Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. If I had a table of contents, in the table of contents, under, from Genesis to Exodus 19, would not be the Old Testament, okay? Because the Old Testament does not get delivered until Exodus 19 to Israel, okay? That covenant was not made with Israel until Exodus 19. So from Genesis chapter 1 to Exodus 19 would be promise, okay? Then, in the table of contents, Exodus 19 all the way up to the death of the testator, Hebrews chapter 9, 15 through 18, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ would be Old Testament under the law. Okay, so that insert in your Bible is wrong according to the Bible, okay? And again, this is the picture of the way the table of contents needs to be changed. So maybe if you're making a dispensational Bible, this is what you would do, okay? And that that's my thought, maybe one day, but we'll see. So from Exodus 19 to the death of the Lord Jesus Christ is Old Testament. After the death, burial, and resurrection, the New Testament, the New Covenant is given to Israel. So the New Covenant is in place right after Jesus Christ dies and is buried and rises again to Acts chapter 9. Okay? In Acts chapter 9, the Apostle Paul gets saved, becomes Saul of Tarsus, gets changed into the Apostle Paul, and he's been given the revelation of the mystery, and that interrupts Israel's New Covenant, New Testament, okay? And Israel's fallen, okay? Israel has to fall for the dispensation of the grace of God to interrupt it, right? And it's because of their fall we have salvation today. So clearly they are gone because I'm saved and 
that is the time we're in now. That is the time that is not in your table of contents. Okay? That would be, there would be a page at Acts chapter 9 that says, New Testament covenant fallen replaced not replaced times changed to the but now and God is dispensing a new dispensation of grace no covenant no law grace so the covenant ends here gets interrupted and you'd have a new insert in your Bible that says Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that is what we are in today and then when the church the body of Christ meets the Lord in the air then Hebrews to Revelation kicks in with Israel's end times Israel's endurance to the end to inherit the kingdom Hebrews to Revelation okay and that would be in your Bible as the reconstitution of Israel and the New Testament starting up again and Israel being born again okay and it that program just continues as if the church of the body of Christ never interrupted it because they would be gone they would be we would be up in the air we'd be in heavenly places and then God would continue to fulfill the promises for his earthly places his earthly kingdom okay hopefully that helps you understand your Bible a little more and helps you to understand where I am coming from and we're gonna go through a lot more of that when I post um, some new studies on how to chart out your Bible called charting okay thanks again for listening email me at buttonowministry at gmail.com and subscribe to my channel thanks again